Mini episode 1068 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Welcome to FDH Lounge Mini Episode 1068. I'm FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our Week 13 preview for the 2018 NFL season. We did better than our historic flop the previous week, but we were still not great. We went 6-9, and nine, bringing us to 80, 85, and 8 on the season. We went 1-2 and two on the Big 3 and 0-1 and one on the lock, making us 19-17 and 17 and 6-6 six and six on those, respectively. For the first time in months, no teams on the bye this week. On Thursday night, two dome teams with dreams of January and February square off at Jerry World with the Saints laying a touchdown. With the roll that they're on, we'd be foolish to go against them. On Sunday, two teams have been to the Super Bowl this decade meet when the Ravens come to the ATL in a pick'em that started with the road team laying two and a half. It will emerge yet again how lucky Lamar Jackson has been in his first few defensive matchups as Baltimore stays alive. It's Matthew Stafford versus the quarterback that Matthew Stafford was supposed to become when the Rams come to Motown laying 11 up from nine and a half. This could be a classic letdown game, but L.A.'s coming in off a bye, so the blowout will be coming. A team from the desert comes to the frozen tundra when the cards come in, getting 14 and a half. Aside from last week, they've recently specialized in some cheap covers, but famous last words, they won't get one here. The Fish will look to avenge their loss in the 1992 AFC Championship game when the Bills come in, getting three and a half down from a touchdown. Few teams in the league are as frustrating in their coaching as Miami, so these could again be famous last words, but look for them to cover in a must-win spot. In this next matchup, wow, what a difference a year makes. The Colts come to Jayville laying four, up from two and a half. However, the Jags have just made a change at offensive coordinator, which can often give a short-term boost. Look for them to sneak out the cover. It's the toughest test yet for Baker and the Browns in this delirious post-Hugh Jackson era as they come to the Dome in Houston, getting a touchdown up from four and a half. In a classic sandwich game for the Texans, they will let down just enough for Seatown to at least get in the back door. This next one can't look too good for the reeling Jets, who seem to get taken apart by a desperate team every week. Now they're going to Nashville, getting 9.5 down from 10.5. Here's some limited good news, though. With the Titans' inconsistency, they will at least get in the back door. In an ancient AFL-AFC rivalry, the Chiefs face their bizarro world awful equivalent, the Raiders, in Oaktown, spotting 15.5. Coming in off the bye with plenty of time to think about what went wrong on their last trip to the coast, KC will roll. These two teams played on the last championship Sunday, and now it's the Vikings coming to Foxborough, getting five down from seven and a half. Put this quote up in lights, it's a statement win for Minnesota. RIP to this once great rivalry, San Fran comes to the Pacific Northwest, getting ten and a half down from eleven. Unfortunately for the Niners, what could have been a letdown spot for the Seahawks will not be because of the history between these two teams. On Sunday night, two of the big three QBs from the class of 04 meet on the shores of the Three Rivers as the Chargers come in getting a field goal down from three and a half. Armed with their history at home, in prime time, and as always, with the refs, Pittsburgh Geeks won out. It's a must-win game for both teams in the NFC East as the Redskins come north to the link on Monday night getting a touchdown. Without Alex Smith, it won't be nearly enough. Now for the big three. Two repeated Super Bowl losers from the 1980s meet on the banks of the Ohio River when the Broncos invade laying 5.5 up from 3.5. Down to their backup QB and with Hugh Jackson on their staff no less, this is certainly not the spot where the home team rises up. In a critical NFC South clash, Carolina's counting on a get-well game in Tampa laying a field goal down from 4. We'll keep this short and sweet they will get it. It's a revival of one of the NFL's ancient rivalries when the monsters of the Midway come to the Meadowlands laying three and a half down from four, and this is our thousand-star gold-plated lock of the millennium for NFL Week 13. 
Even with the odds makers' fixation with the home field goal advantage factored in, this is still a borderline why ask why, but we'll stay on the Bears in this spot. Thank you for tuning in to this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all clear channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Papermate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse, and The Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 